Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a quick restoration on this mechanical switch keyboard. I haven't uh, looked inside yet, so we don't know what kind of switches they are, but uh, they do have a, a fairly nice feel to them. It's got the AT style connector. It is from a company called Nantan Computing, otherwise fairly standard layout. Uh, it's fairly yellow. It'll be interesting to see uh, with some cleanup how the uh, color changes. On the back, we have the label Nantan Computer Company, made in Taiwan. We have a switch for ATXT modes, and we have some keyboard feet. Other than that, everything's fairly standard. Uh, it's not super heavy duty feeling, but uh, it is mechanical switches, so I wanna get it all cleaned up, and uh, at the end, maybe we'll uh, give it a try on the 46. I've started by taking off all the smaller keys. Uh, I haven't taken off the ones yet that have the metal hinges underneath. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up a lot of this dust and take the outer casing off just to make it easier to get these keys off and then we'll continue. I've got all the keys off and as you can see it is pretty gross so I'm gonna go ahead and take it outside dust everything off and then we will get the keys cleaned up and make sure everything's looking good in here before we put everything back together I thought it would be good to do a comparison of the key switches between this keyboard and another that I've used in some of my other videos it is a uh, still a fairly generic board but is a uh, from Monterey International, a K104. This does have uh, Alps branded switches. Pretty much as far as I can tell, these clone switches are nearly identical, but I thought I would do a quick comparison of the two. Let's go ahead and get a close-up sound of the two. And then visually and from the parts, I am not going to open up this one at this point, but the insides of the switches look to be pretty much identical. I've already got the shell cleaned up and I'll go ahead and reassemble this board and we'll do some testing. The keyboard is all back and assembled. I did do some retro brighting in addition to the cleaning 
I uh, just use the simple method of placing the items in the sunlight directly with no added uh, chemical agents. I think it is interesting how we are fairly certain that the cause of the yellowing on a lot of these items is sunlight. Uh, as you'll often see a computer that was set next to a window and uh, one side will be yellowed while the other side is not. Um, or for example, where a monitor was sitting on top of a case, there will be an area uh, that was blocking the sunlight that was uh, not yellowed. But then at the same time, you can take something that is yellowed, place it into uh, bright sunlight, uh, you know, intense direct sunlight for a few days and uh, it will remove a lot of that yellowing. Um, I, I would say, you know, probably 90% of the yellowing is gone. And a, a few of the keys just had very light on the, the top where it, it didn't fully go away. Uh, it's not clear to me, this is a, a different plastic insert here, uh, if that was sort of the original brown coloring there or if that is still yellowed, but the majority of the plastics did uh, brighten up quite well. So I think uh, next up, we will go ahead and get it hooked up to the 486 machine that I built in a previous video. The keyboard is now hooked up to our 486DX266 machine. So I wanted to just run through a few quick uh, test demonstrations with the keyboard. Keep it a run through and see how it works here. I do have the other uh, mechanical keyboard that I'll probably use most of the time, uh, but this will be sort of a backup um, keyboard. So one thing I thought would be fun is Mario Teaches Typing, which is a application I never used back in the day, uh, but it's a DOS game. Um, I'm a big Nintendo fan, uh, le love all their consoles and uh, especially the Mario games. So I thought it would be fun to go back to uh, DOS and sort of have a tie-in with typing. Welcome to Mario Teaches Typing! That is pretty abrupt. So we've got some options in the menus here. Help, demo, keyboard. Looks like these are sort of uh, settings toggles. You can create a new student. So we're picking our lessons. You can pick your character. And then, so it looks like you've got your basic home row and then you can add in different lessons there. Let's go ahead and just start off. On your mark, get set, to go. It looks like you don't actually have to time the visuals with your key presses because I can just press these before Mario has actually reached a block on the screen. It's interesting that they've used pretty close to the actual game music. I think this is probably Super Mario World music, it sounds like. Overall, pretty interesting for a uh, Nintendo-related game being on a uh, DOS machine. Um, not something I probably would have played back in the day, but uh, still pretty cool to see. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. I thought another cool way to demo the new clean keyboard would be to connect up to some Telnet BBSs. I had previously set up a network card and uh, got the network all working on this 486 machine in a previous video and uh, used some other functionality there, but I uh, didn't actually do any Telnetting. So let's go ahead and connect up to the cave. OK, 
Okay, so what can we do on here? We've got all kinds of stuff. File selection, online games. Let's see what games we got. Uh, Legend of the Red Dragon. I played this back in the day. Let's see who they got on here. I played a few different uh, MUDs back in the day. Um, the biggest one I remember was uh, Medivia, which I had played for a couple of years probably with uh, a few friends uh, locally in high school who were uh, on the same one. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? Trade Wars, I remember playing that too. I'm not going to spend a ton of time jumping into all the de details of these. I mostly just kind of wanted to uh, explore around a little bit and uh, get some of that nostalgia of uh, jumping around in uh, ANSI BBSs. Let's see what we got here for some message from the SysOp. So these are from quite a while back, 2007 it looks like. Probably when he uh, started it, I assume. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, exit out. No notes, what do we have under files here? So he's got some zips of the door games. Yeah, mostly stuff just related to the uh, BBS itself. All right, we'll go ahead and disconnect from this one and connect to one more. BBS, Black Flag, which uh, from the websites, at least I was researching, uh, seems like a, a pretty good uh, ANSI graphics site. Press escape twice. It's a different themes it looks like maybe. Okay, so let's see if we can make a new user. Apply for a new account. And we will do Joel Tech. Interesting, I'm noticing that uh, the backspace is not working in the Telnet application. The uh, MTCP Telnet client lets you drop back down to DOS, and the, the backspace key is definitely working. So I don't think it's the keyboard, but something with the DOS MTCP client. Um, I'll have to look into that, but uh, since the video is mainly about the keyboard, I just wanted to show some Telnet BBSs and uh, using the keyboard to access those. I thought that was kind of a cool callback to the older uh, mechanical keyboard days. And uh, while this won't be my primary keyboard, I think uh, in trying out a few things, both uh, DOS commands and a couple applications here, um, seems to type fairly nicely and uh, will work well as a backup mechanical keyboard. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing the transformation from a pretty dirty, grungy keyboard to uh, something that's fairly nice and usable. So that was our quick cleanup of the Zeos mechanical keyboard from Nantan Computer Company. Uh, I think it'll make a, a good backup board and uh, has 
a fairly nice keyboard feel. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you next time.